Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at how to program the X arcade stick and I'm gonna go into a lot of detail in this video. I have a shorter version uh, down below in the description. There's a link if you wanna take a look at that one, but I definitely recommend that you stick with this one uh, because I'm gonna go into a lot of details. So the first thing you wanna do when you take it out of the box is put all the cables aside. The only one that you need is this one here. It has on one end, it has a serial connection and you're gonna plug that in right here to the back. And the other end you have a USB connection and a PS2 keyboard connection. And we're not gonna use this one, so we're gonna concentrate on the USB connection. So the first thing you wanna do after that is plug it into one of the USB slots in your computer. So I'm gonna plug mine into my USB hub over here. And then the next thing you wanna do, and the only requirement really, aside from the actual XRK stick and a computer, uh, you do need one of these keyboard guys, and it has to be a PS2 keyboard. Um, if you take a look at the end of the cable here, it's also a purple connection. Uh, it's round, it's the older connection before USB was around. So let me show you real quick over here on the computer. If you go to Amazon and you type in PS2 keyboard, um, you can see that you get a bunch of results here. And the first one here, Inland PS2 keyboard, uh, 647, so it's real cheap. And that's actually what you need. So you cannot use a uh, PS2 to USB adapter. You cannot use one of these right here, okay? It will not work. So once you have this keyboard, you're gonna go ahead and plug it in the back here to the purple connector. So, and these will most, most of the time, these will be purple. Sometimes they'll be black, but um, it doesn't matter. You're gonna plug it in right back here. All right, so at that point, guys, you're pretty much ready to go. The first thing you wanna do on the XRK stick is you wanna flick this switch here to the left one time, and you're gonna hear a click. And uh, after that, you want to press this uh, black button in the back and until the uh, LED on the right here turns off. And that puts it in programming mode. All right, so then um, if you're using, you can use any computer to do this. It doesn't have to be one purchase from me. Um, you know, if you buy one and you already have, if you buy a computer from me while you're waiting, if you already have this or it gets to you before my computer does, you can do this on any other computer. Now, if you're doing it with my computer, you're gonna wanna exit Hyperspin and let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna go over here. Uh, the computer's gonna load to this right here. Um, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna do Control Shift Escape. And then you want to go down to New Task. And if it doesn't already say Explorer in this uh, box here, you wanna type in Explorer. And then you're gonna hit OK. All right, so now Hyperspin loaded in the background. Um, I'm sorry, Windows loaded in the background. So what you wanna do is uh, quit the process on Hyperspin. So you wanna highlight Hyperspin, and you wanna do end task, boom. That takes you to the desktop, all right? At this point, you can go ahead and open up Notepad, and you can keep it open right there. Uh, so basically what you're doing here is you're programming uh, keyboard keys to these buttons right here. And if you take a look at the diagram that I provided with the package, uh, you, you're gonna find a, uh, a layout of every button that looks exactly like one of these right here. And while we're on the topic, uh, it doesn't matter if you're programming a two-player version or the, XR, uh, the XRK tank stick, the real big one with the trackball, they're all the same thing. Uh, the only thing to know with the trackball is that it's basically a mouse. So if you move it around while you're here in Windows, it's literally gonna move your mouse around like this. The other thing I get asked about is um, on the XRK tank stick, there are two white buttons on the left and two on the right instead of single white buttons like these and the regular um, two player version. And all that is is uh, your left and right mouse click and those buttons cannot be programmed, they're hardwired. So let me show you a picture of that real quick here. So here you go. This button in the back furthest away from your body would be the equivalent of left click on the mouse. And on the right side, this button right here, furthest away from your body again, would be the equivalent of a right, a right click on the mouse. And then you're gonna be programming the ones in the front, this one and this one right here. And those are gonna be um, either insert credit for arcade style games or for pinball games, they're gonna be your left and right flippers. All right, that's the only difference between the tank stick and this solo here or the regular two player one. All right, so let's get back into the programming. So again, we're just gonna be programming keyboard keys to match 
uh, the diagram that I, that I gave you guys and we're gonna make each button, uh, program each button to a certain keyboard key. So to do that, what you wanna do is you hold down the button on the keyboard and then you hold down the corresponding button on the X arcade stick um, following D diagram. So for player one, button one, you're gonna do A and you're gonna hold both of them down at the same time for about two seconds. Um, I like to let, let the LED flash about two times and uh, that should be good enough to get it programmed. So you're gonna move on and do B, then C, then you're gonna do D, then E, and F. Player one start is R, and then the side button over here is gonna be S, and then you have uh, enter here, and you have escape. Now the joystick comes programmed out of the factory so you don't need to do anything with this guy. Um, the player two joystick you do need to program and if you take a look at the diagram, you can see that that's gonna be M, N, Q, and uh, M, N, O, and Q. So you know, you hold it to the right and you hold uh, M at the same time, then right, then up, then right, then down. Same thing we just did with the buttons with the player two joystick, as well as with the player two buttons, again, following the diagram, so G, H, I, J, K, L. So exactly the same way. Now once you do every single button, you want to press the, the black button in the back here and turn the LED back on. Now you can use the actual um, arcade stick and it should have the programming that we just did. So to test that, you're going to go ahead back to notepad and you want to go ahead and just press the buttons and you should be pretty much like typing on a keyboard. So it should correspond to the diagram that I provided. So, so you can see that is A, that is B, C, D, E, F, and then this should be R, which it is, and S, and then this one is Enter. Uh, now the directionals, you can test in here too. The only thing you can't test is Escape because it won't do anything. So if you go back into Hyperspin and you press Escape and it's not responding, um, you know, you would just have to reprogram it. Maybe you didn't do it right. Another thing you can do is on the desktop, I included a utility, it's called XRK Test. And you can also use this to test the buttons as well. So just ignore the picture up here and concentrate on the black bar. The picture is not gonna match up with what you're pressing, so ignore it. But you can press the buttons and you can see that you also get the letters down here, D, E, F. And then to test escape on this one, you can do it. And once you press escape, it's just gonna quit out of the program and that's how you know that it's working. So let's try that. And there you go, guys. It quit the program so you know that escape is good. And you know that all your other buttons are good because we just tested them. And at that point you're done. So it's as easy as that. All right, so now you have your XRK joystick programmed. We're, I'm gonna show you what all the buttons do inside of Hyperspin and how to navigate Hyperspin. So let's go in here and open up Hyperspin. All right, so uh, basic navigation. The joystick scrolls up and down to select the different systems. Uh, to go into a system, you're going to press enter or player one start. They both work. Uh, so let, I like to press enter, so we're going to go in. That takes you into the actual system. Then you scroll up and down to select the different games. And once you land on the game that you want to play, uh, you press enter again and that'll take you into the game. It's as easy as that. If you want to go back to the main menu, you press escape one more time. And if you're done playing and you want to um, get out of the entire thing, uh, you press escape one more time and then enter to say, would you like to exit? Yes. Uh, you confirm that by pressing enter and that's going to shut down the computer we're going to say no to that and we're going to go here into mame all right so once you're in a system if you press player one button one that is going to pull up your favorites so if you want to view favorites you would press enter at that point and let's try that it takes you into the favorites wheel and these are just some games i've added you can add your own in here so if we back up one more time and we go back to uh, the regular wheel Let's go back to the main system wheel and then we go back into MAME. Now if you want to add a game, let's say you come down here to 1944, you would press player one button one and then you would go down with the joystick, add to favorites and then you can either press enter or the same player one button one again. I like to keep it consistent so we're going to press enter and there you go. Now it says remove because you've added it. So if you want to view it, you go back up, press enter. And there's 1944 that we just added right there. All right, another option you have is uh, genre. You can search, uh, you can scroll by genre. So 
player two button two is going to take you there once you're inside a system. Here you go. So now there, you have the categories. They're broken down by uh, manufacturer here. And then you have it broken down by, uh, you know, action games or baseball games, basketball, etc. All right. Uh, let's get out of here by pressing escape. Now, once you're in, the, in any of the, of the menus here, in the main menu or in the system menu, you can actually do a search and you can actually do a search by game name. So to access that, if you look at the diagram that I've included for player two, on the bottom here, you have forward slash and P. Those are going to be these two buttons on the player two side. Um, so to search, it would be the first button on the left. So this button right here on the player two side. Now, because I don't have the two player version, I'm just going to use the keyboard and press those same keys. So if you press forward slash, that brings up a search and then you can just go through. Let's search for Tekken, for example, and I'm going to do T and I'm going to go over to E and press enter. K, K, E, N. And then we're going to go down to highlight search and press enter one more time. And this pulls up every single Tekken game in the machine. Uh, now this one, this first tab is showing you all of them in, in one screen. And then if you go all the way to the top and you scroll to the right, um, it'll break it down by system. So then from here, you can actually launch a game. If you wanted to play Tekken, for example, highlight it, press enter, and then it's going to start the game up. All right, so once you're in the game, you want to insert credit for any arcade style game. To do that, you're gonna press the left white button or the right white button for player two. So as you can see here, if I press this button, it's inserting credit, and then you're gonna go ahead and press player one start. And that's, it takes you right into the game. So let's actually get a game going here. All right, so now you're playing and you want to pause, right? You have two options. One, I call special pause and then you have your regular pause. So your regular pause is just going to freeze the frame. So again, I'm going to use P on the keyboard because I don't have the player two side over here right now. And that's going to be this button over here, this one on player two side. Um, as you can see, that one is P on the keyboard, and that's why I just pressed P on the keyboard, but you would just press that button right there. And that literally just freezes the frame. This is a quick way to pause it if you just want to walk away for a few minutes or something like that. Now, we have another option for pause, and that's this button next to it right there on the player two side, so this one. And that one I call special pause. And then we're going to go in there right now. And then I'm gonna make a video later on uh, going into more detail about this menu here. But real quick, you can see that you have a lot more options. So you can actually save the game here. You can load the save state. And just keep in mind that if you don't see these two in here, it's because the system doesn't support it. And also sometimes games themselves don't support it and within a system. So if you try to save state, it'll, uh, it'll let you know that the save state is not supported for that game. And you have other options here that like you can look at the controller, the original controller for the system and some other things, like I said, I'll go into these later in another, in another video. So to get out of here, you can either press the same button on the player two side that you pressed to access this menu, or you can just press the escape key. And I like to keep it consistent. So we're going to press escape, which is this one here. So you press that and it takes you back out. All right. So now that you're back in the game, uh, you're done playing, you press escape one more time and that takes you back to the main system. And that's it guys. If you were done playing, you would press escape. Like I mentioned before, you would say you would hit enter. Would you like to exit? And it would shut down the computer and you're all set. So that's about it guys. It's as easy as that. Um, again, keep in mind that you definitely need one of these PS2 keyboards. You have to have one of these. Um, that's the only requirement for this thing to work. And if you guys don't even want to bother with this, if you know, if you don't have one of these, you don't want to purchase one, you can order this directly from me and I'll send it to you and it'll be programmed and ready to go. It's just going to be a little bit extra because I got to cover shipping to, to have it shipped back out to you once it gets to me. Cause I don't, I don't stock these. I just order them on a per order basis. So 
it's about 20 extra dollars, something like that. And I can just do this step for you and you don't have to deal with it at all. But as you can see, it's very easy. So you should have no problems doing this whatsoever. All right, that's gonna be it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, as always, leave a thumbs up below. Uh, please subscribe this way. I, I know you guys are watching, you guys are enjoying these videos and I'll keep making them. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.